Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, we're going to be overcoming the most profound issue in just about everything we buy, planned obsolescence. This is my 2010 Apple Mac Pro desktop, and it's been my daily driver for the last few years. While some perceive old as bad, inside it's been upgraded thanks to something all computers used to have, modular components. Amongst the dust is 12 core Xeon processors, 64 gigs of RAM and a GTX 980. While not the latest hardware, it's still a very capable computer, one that has fallen victim to planned obsolescence. Since the release of the 2019 Mac Pro, Apple has dropped all operating system upgrades for this computer, as well as compatibility for their apps on macOS High Sierra, the operating system I'm stuck on. Starting with macOS Catalina, a 2013 Mac Pro is required in order to update. Additionally, according to NVIDIA, Apple fully controls drivers for macOS, and as a result, NVIDIA can't update their drivers as a lack of approval from Apple. So even if I could update, my graphics card has no drivers. To get around this, I've purchased a new graphics card. But not just any card, this is an AMD 5700 XT, which can be found inside the 2020 iMac, and therefore is fully supported by Apple with drivers built right into macOS. This one has been modified with Apple firmware, so the computer will show a boot screen and function just like any stock computer would. But even with a supported graphics card, we still aren't allowed to update the operating system, which is especially an issue as this card only works with Catalina or later. To get around this, I'll be using a tool from a guy named DOSDude. This patcher will allow us to download macOS directly from Apple and create a bootable USB to install the software. Using this method, we can also update to Big Sur, however, I'll be sticking with Catalina for now. After it's completed, we can boot into the drive and perform the install as usual. At the desktop, you can now see we're running macOS Catalina version 10.15.7. We're also running without an NVIDIA drivers, so the computer is pretty laggy and unusable. But before we install the new card, I'm going to apply a patch as recommended by the seller of my new graphics card, as well as a few stability patches included in the DOS Dude software. Inside the Mac, we can unlock the PCI bay and unplug the two 6-pin power cables from the GTX 980. After removing an additional bracket, we can now remove the whole graphics card. This is the first time I've had this card out since owning the Mac, and you can see it's accumulated quite a lot of dust in both the fan and over the shroud of the graphics card itself. While an obsolete card for any Mac user, this would work perfectly in any PC. At a closer inspection, you can see a few loose screws, with one sticking out significantly and being completely rounded off. This card was also flashed for use in a Mac, and came from the same company as my new card. It's been about a year since I opened this computer, so it's time I gave it a good clean. It has become completely caked in dust. With a large portion of my life currently online, this computer is used for both work and uni every day. Removing the CPU tray, we can get access to a few more fans that will need to be cleaned out. I couldn't figure out how to remove them fully, so I'll just pull out the big pieces of dust and spray out the rest. I'm not too worried about getting it absolutely perfect, as this machine will ultimately get dusty in just a matter of days. Around back, the exhaust fan was really needing some attention. It was almost completely clogged. Unfortunately, I also ran out of compressed air, so I had to resort to using a brush and a vacuum. There is a couple of other areas I'd like to clean of this computer before we reassemble it, such as the other side of that exhaust fan, as well as wiping up any dust that was sitting underneath the CPU and RAM tray. Moving on to the tray itself, it's got its own fair share of dust. In fact, it's caked in a whole layer of dust and fluff, which I can brush away with an anti-static brush. With the tray looking respectable, it's time to reinstall it into the Mac Pro. I can simply slide it back into place 
and lock the two tabs back into position. From here, it's time to clean up the back of the Mac Pro before we get our new graphics card installed. I'll need to swap the two 6-pin power cables for two 8-pin variants. These cables will supply power to our new 5700 XT graphics card directly from the motherboard, with no need for any power modifications. We'll need to remove the plastic protective film over our new graphics card before we get it installed. To give myself a bit of extra clearance, I'm going to remove the NVMe drives from the above slot. I did an in-depth video about these, they do provide the fastest possible storage for one of these old Mac Pros. With the 5700 XT installed, I can reinstall the NVMe drives before attaching the retaining bracket and locking the PCI slots. After attaching the power cables, the card is fully installed. For those wondering, in the other PCI slots, I have two 1TB NVMe drives, a 500GB boot drive, and a USB 3 card. Before closing up the computer, I'll neaten up the newly installed power cables using a few zip ties. What we are left with is a 2010 Mac Pro 5.1 equipped with 64 gigs of DDR3 memory, two 6-core Intel Xeon processors totaling 12 cores and 24 threads, a 5700 XT graphics card, and 18.75 terabytes of storage. With all of that, it's time to close up the Mac Pro and see what it's capable of. In terms of real-world performance, the biggest bottleneck is the processors, Editing H.264 4K footage shot on my new camera is possible if converted to Apple's ProRes format, or by using a lower resolution proxy media. The footage will play back perfectly in VLC, but struggles in Apple's own QuickTime Player and Final Cut Pro. The CPU, GPU and memory sit around 30% load while editing, so I believe the issue comes down to the compression of these massive 4K files. Using less compressed formats would likely fix the issue, but I don't currently have an SD card fast enough to record any test footage. When it comes to benchmarks, comparing it against the $10,000 base model Mac Pro from 2019, this 5.1 scored a staggering 123.8% better in graphics performance over the RX 580 found in the 2019 model. On the other side of things, it scored 84% worse in CPU performance as a result of the old CPUs that cannot be upgraded any further. Something a little closer in the CPU score is the M1 MacBook Pro, which only scored 9.3% higher. Of course, it's much more power efficient, smaller, and can likely encode much newer video codecs, but the point behind this test is to show the ability of this so-called obsolete computer. In terms of disk performance, on my fastest drives I get about 2GB write and 2.8GB read, which is plenty fast enough. All of the upgrades I've purchased for this Mac can be used in the newer 2019 model and any PC, so if I was to get a new computer, I would continue using my upgrades. The ability to upgrade the components is why this computer can last so long, and is one of the reasons companies have moved to unupgradable, unrepairable products. They can sell you a newer one sooner and more often. With the global chip shortage of 2021, it seems we are throwing things away faster than we can make them, and the system isn't keeping up. I'm happy I was able to revive this Mac Pro and get it a little bit more up to date. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the computer playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video and I'll catch you guys next time.